guaranteed a medal here in Japan. But uh, which of these two combinations is going to be on the podium at the end of today? In the first round, then uh, three set against the Dutch pair, Egbering and Sheppers. And uh, then they got through uh, the uh, final, uh, the uh, semi final of Uda and Kifa. And then some of the legendary Austrians, Tano Jeremias, and then Kofi Hirsch and Stephen Reed. Tough match against uh, the French team. Uh, they're seated sick here at Pineda and Sider, so they weren't expected to win that one. And thanks to Catania and Jeremiah. Uh, again, as I say, that they see possibly a little bit of a, a falsity because of the, the lack of tennis that they've played in 2016, which has allowed their world rankings to drop. But I'm sure when the draw came out, probably all the, all the pairs would have been looking for them as the sort of dangerous floaters that you didn't want to come mm. across in the quarterfinal. I mean, what a player he has been throughout his uh, career. He had that three-year, 106-match consecutive win streak in singles through 2007 to, to 2010, which was ended by Uday. And then again, he went on a 77-match winning streak between January 2014 and December 2015, broken by Gerard. And, of course, Gerard was the player that knocked him out of the singles this time around. But he, he has just lost that air of invincibility about him. Of course, he's uh, suffered injuries this year. Maybe this Paralympic Games coming a fraction too soon for him in terms of, you know, his preparations to get everything right to, to be here and, and, you know, at the top of his game. Yeah, he's, uh, you'll notice he's uh, warming up uh, closest to the camera here with a uh, elbow support in his right arm. And uh, that is where he's had the issues. Twice he's had surgery. This year he had surgery on his, his elbow, but he's had it before as well. And uh, he's been so not quite had the the amount of tennis that uh, perhaps would have liked coming into the Paralympic Games. He's still contesting for a bronze medal here. And the gold medal match will involve uh, the Great Britain pair of Reed and Hewitt and uh, Stefan Uda and Nicholas Kiefer from France uh, later on on this day. Of course, we've got Tokyo in four years' time. And there's going to be a bit more pressure on uh, all of these yeah. four when that comes around. Well, they've got so many players, haven't they? They do, and they have uh, so many players at, the, at this end of the uh, spectrum, of the, the sharp end. So plenty of competition for places, and that can only be good news. But, uh, the level is on the way up. Pineda, believe it or not, was 20 when he won his first, or when he played in his first uh, Paralympic Games in, in Athens. One doubles there, so and, and he's just 32. We've got, a, we've got players uh, like Uday into his 40s into the uh, the final, so yeah, there's uh, scope for many more years. But as we've been uh, saying, the theme this year has been about the youth and about the young generation coming in. So pressure on the slightly older players for uh, the youth, and maybe changing the style of the game and the pace of the game. And, evolving very quickly and it's 40 years since Brad Parks decided to use wheelchair tennis as uh, rehabilitation and uh, turned it into a global sport. This, uh, Brad Parks did get to Barcelona in 1992 when he with uh, Andy Snow in the doubles. Sport has come in such a long way, hasn't it? You see with the ability of these guys and uh, the physicality too. The, only, uh, the difference between uh, this sport and able bodied tennis is that you allow two bounces. Players, uh, just like able bodied tennis, you, you want to take the ball early and let it bounce twice. The points and, and of course, the earlier you can take it, the more power you have behind the ball. The heat will work not in play today. Yeah. It's 
it's, uh, it's fascinating to see how they are sizing one another up here, these uh, combinations. Uh, I'm sure they're pretty relaxed. They've been at, uh, playing at this level for long enough, but uh, it is a Paralympic medal match. So there's just that little bit of uh, extra tension, no doubt. And uh, they don't get the sort of coverage, media coverage. Any, in any other tournament. And so this is a uh, few points. Talking about the, the double bounce, that's the only difference really. Mm. And at this level, very, very often we'll see whole rallies go by without the double bounce being, uh, being used. They are so mobile around the court. Particularly in men's wheelchair mm. tennis, uh, they tend to set the point up, they serve a little bigger, so uh, it's often a who can get the first big strike in, who can get the other, the player pushed back. That's so vital, and uh, we'll see, I'm sure, a, a lot of aggressive tennis today, and players looking to try and take the ball as early as possible. It should be absolutely fascinating. Final moments ahead of this bronze medal match. Miki and Sanada against Kinida and Saida. This is Saida on the left, Satoshi Saida and uh, Shingo Kinida. Smart from him as they head out. <laughs> he headed up without uh, picking up uh, his towel. Now he goes back and uh, the pair. So Mickey to serve in the bronze medal match. Mickey and Sonata against Canada and Saida. up the half volley. Canada likes to uh, make a counter punch it. Start. What a good rally. You get a flavor of what it's about here. You can already see the tactics developing. You can see the experienced duo of Canada and Sider just saying, look, break us down. I'm going to sit back. See if you can come up with a way to get the ball past us. The court's here in rear, pretty slow. Drop shot, lovely play from Miki. 
well, I was just about to say, I wonder whether we'll see some drop shots mm. because of the way that Sider and Canada have started well behind the baseline. So, a lovely touch from the 27 year old. Down he drops uh, the ball into the net, and it's a uh, break points the way of Canada inside of the first game. the break well they've certainly been the more uh, aggressive pair Miki and uh, Sonata but really pay off in that uh, game they've certainly been looking to move to the net a little more often as Canada and Sider break serve in the first game well Canada's uh, generally an excellent player on the defense and uh, superb at counter punching and so that's why I think uh, Miki and Sonata know that they have to be very mm. careful when they do come forward and you can see that whipping it down low Canada once uh, Sonata and Miki did attack the net made it very difficult for them and as I say these courts pretty slow in Rio so uh, they'll have plenty of time on the ball Canada and uh, Sider to come up with something special a good start by uh, the more experienced pair the two who have a gold and a, a bronze in their back pocket from previous Paralympic Games already it's about another bronze it's about the belief Miki and Sonata, so they can beat the great man, Shingo Kaneda. He smiles, isn't he, uh, Kaneda, at the moment? He's very relaxed. It's a super play from that Miki. Really positive. Got himself in and took the return nice and early. And had all the momentum stretching up high for the backhand volley. Didn't need to do too much with it other than block it out in front. Like taking the ball on the rise, don't they, Miki and Sonata? Full of positivity. Just to be a little careful of not being over aggressive mm. as they were in that rally. When it is the right time to come forward, get some openings. the chance set it up well Sider didn't make best of his attempted lob 
missed a chance. Hadn't already firmly established. It's all about whether Miki and Sonata can just find a way to open up the court and create situations where they can hit winners. Yeah, I mean, siders are like a brick wall at the back of the court there. And they just keep it coming back. That's a good shot. Depth there. Mm. <laughs> this is a beautiful and lovely play. Sent up in position. Didn't have a lot of momentum into the ball, but really whipped up the back of it. Couldn't have been any more accurate than that. I whether we'll see them use the drop shot again, by the way, because uh, it worked the first time they played it. Try and get Canada and Sider into more uncomfortable positions. More positive play, wonderful to watch. Second time in this game, attacking the serve and winning on the first volley. It's Miki, who's the man who's making everything happen right now. Similar sort of point to the first point in the game. And he's enjoying himself, it's important to do that. Yeah. He's played better tennis, but are enjoying it, doing doubles. That's the danger, he is so dangerous. Canada on that backhand and he stood up to it. Cracking backhand. He uh, doesn't mind a bit of time on the ball, Canada, but he is so skillful and talented, as you say, just can take it early. Whipping that one right down to the bottom of the tyres. Pushed it wide. It's a bit of a gamble there. Wasn't the best first volley. Uh, yeah, I thought he was going to be a little bit yeah. exposed there, particularly with the, the magical hand skills of Canada, but maybe just rushing uh, multiple gold medalist. comes from side up and it's a break back point for Miki and Sonata up. well here's a rarity didn't look like he was ever gonna miss Satoshi Sider finally pushing the ball long and it is uh, Sonata and Miki who get the break back game of peace in this opening set you have to say on the balance of play pretty fair yeah it is going to be so tactically intriguing <laughs> going to attack the serve and over hitting on the forehand uh, Canada that'll be the other dynamic we possibly might see Kurt Sider, it's safe to say, will stay back and mm. be that proverbial brick wall, but Canada has the ability to step up the court. Well, maybe if it doesn't work for them sitting back, maybe he will try coming forward a little more. Oh. Double fault uh, from Sonata. Nice and early. Canada attacked the serve and is uh, so retreating. Sonata. What is the danger? Yeah. If you take that serve so early, you then can be left in a little bit of no man's land and he had to backtrack quickly, but cleverly played by Sonata. You could see that Canada was going backwards, and so he aimed it at the at the chair. 
Hit with enough power that it made it very difficult for Canada to uh, bring it back. They really got the momentum into this ball. And nice and out in front, whipped through it. So just a double fault from Sonata, and it's a very well held service game, first service game for Sonata. Two one. Ricky and Sonata lead Canada and Sider. Two service breaks in the first two games, and now Sonata's held to. Fourth game, it's the first opportunity for Satoshi Saida to serve. They're one, two down. Great rally. It ends the way of uh, Miki and Sonata. He's the character on the court, no question about it. What a fantastic rally. If you're not enjoying this, well, it really is brilliant. There's so much going on yeah. in the rally. I just wonder whether they've had a little conversation, uh, Sonata and Miki, about how to maybe draw this man forward. Mm. They're getting him into the net a few times, and eventually it paid off.
it's going to go out. Bold it was, sneaky across the court there, prepared to try most things this pair for Sonata and uh, Miki. Yeah, there's no doubt who they're targeting as well. Mm. All time and time again played towards side at Canada almost uh, as well pick up a newspaper. You can understand it though with all the of his achievements. Correction. Side has been very solid so far. Still in the uh, semi-final, Reed and Hewitt employed the similar tactic. Just out. A big target. It's the right shot to go for. How did this make the uh, pride in winning this match, going ahead to Tokyo in four years' time? Be introduced to your home fans as the bronze medalist from 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Good serve into the body, set up uh, the point well for Canada and Sider. They've just got to be a little bit aware, maybe not overplaying to Sider, and they almost seem so desperate to get that ball away from Canada that the reason why he just pushed it wide. This nice back, and of course, it's going to float over the net to give a bit of chance. Up up the middle, or looping it out wide to side up, and then uh, running one down the middle to uh, bring the air up from Canada. We go down the middle quite a lot, and it's in an attempt to cause a bit of confusion. Of course, they're heading mostly to side up, and every now and then they will go down the middle. And if they do that, as well, it means, particularly from that side, Canada's having to hit a backhand, which isn't as strong as his forehand. Maybe slight hesitation led to the error. with that one. A cheap point, man. Given too many like that away. Yeah, I was going to say, we haven't seen too many of those. It's been high quality stuff. Sonata pushes it over the baseline. 
And it's Tool. It's going to be a grueling match, this one. There's just so much going on in it. Players are pretty solid. They're not making too many unforced errors. See the tactics developing and almost changing with each game. Takuya and Miki to serve. Go out. Attritional stuff as uh, Tanara and Mickey work side or over. They made for long periods of that rally. A spectator. What a backhand to finish the point, though, from Tanara. Canada, no doubt, desperate to try and get involved, but doing a good job of keeping the ball away from him. They're having to work so hard, aren't they? No three points here. Six shots in a row from side up, and uh, eventually the error came from the other side of the net. Yeah, it's the right play, though, I think, this from Miki. We've seen him make a couple of smart volleys. And he probably, probably should have done better with that one. Wrist almost just wasn't strong enough. You can see the racket just move in his hand. I have to say, if uh, Canada goes on to win the bronze medal here, he'll feel pretty, pretty satisfied. He's, <laughs> you know, when you don't play 90% of the points. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest bronze medal he's probably ever won. <laughs> Exposing side his backhand, he's missed a couple off that wing. Then still a little surprised that we're not seeing the drop shot used more from Miki or Sonata, especially when they come forward. If they get a ball where they can take early, you know, around the service line, why they can't drop shot Sider a little more often because he's so comfortable back behind that baseline. You know, who am I to argue? They've just won the last two points by <laughs> forcing him into the area off the backhand yeah. side. So. Not too much 
behind the service line it was a difficult shot to make and in the net by Sonata it's 30 all two all tight match I've never expected anything other than that Sonata's not quite been as strong when he has come forward as Miki mm. it's good time to correct that though early on in this bronze medal match Taking the ball on the rise and just uh, pushing it a little too strong. Mickey lost in the uh, singles to Stefan Uday, the top seed in the quarterfinals. In straight sets. Great point, Canadian side up. Beautifully played by Miki, and he enjoys it as well. That was a tough point, and he had to pause a long time between serves. Kept his composure. He opened up the court the first volley, but the second volley was simply wondrous. Look at this, he's played this you know, above head height, almost behind him as well. Very tough to generate the angle from that position, but was able to do so. Lovely racket head control. Point as well, break point. It's back to Deuce. Oh. Oh. Nice to attack the serve as uh, Canada and it's got a pressure on Mickey here. Here go. Crowd a little bit restless at the moment. played suddenly the court opened up for the angles and again maybe they're listening I need to play that drop shot a little more Just maneuver both Canada and side into different positions on the court and it did open up the court that's a fine forehand up the line to finish the point off
Oh, well, he did well to get there, side up. And not only did he do well to get there, it was the shot he made once he did get there. Excellent depth on the backhand. Miki into a very difficult spot. This is the most relaxed looking player, Miki, uh, at least uh, Sider. There's his role, and he's filling it superbly at the moment. Deuce to all, first set, bronze medal match. Exchange is so so important. Mm -hmm. It's taken 36 minutes, they've been out there already. And still only in the fifth game. Wonder who comes out on top of these grueling exchanges. Maybe they will then move away from their opponent. And is it going to continue like this all the way through? If that is the case, it's going to be a late finish. Showing some wonderful touch at the net now, Saida. Lovely, lovely play. What a, a great uh, combined effort there. They covered the court beautifully, and that man set it up well. Particular pleasure for Canada and Saida as they now take a 3 2 lead in the first set of uh, a very intense bronze medal match. in this first set at 3-2. But it really is hard earned. Every single point is a grueling affair. And that man's composure he cannot be underestimated. He's going to be involved in a lot of the rallies because this pair, Miki and Tanada, will work him over. As we saw in the last point of the previous game, he played some telling shots. Later to serve at uh, 3 2. Yeah. It's a very interesting exchange the last point of the previous game because. Started using the drop shot more. Okay. Miki and Sonata. But outside it, showing that not only is he rock solid at the back, he's showed some net skills too. in terms of both Sider and Kaneda staying at the back and it's Miki and Sonata who are looking to create the openings but there's not really a pattern to their play as in you know they're mixing it up in terms of how they're trying to create that opening that's 
too good. Sensing the play, the uh, quarter split. And uh, Sider is uh, coming into this match beautifully, playing some really, really good shots. I think it's so early all the mm. time, taken away from their opponents. And left a little exposed with the gap in the middle. Quality hitting both Sonata and Miki. And a lot of spin, a lot of power. As you say, depth the key there. Doesn't give much away, does he, uh, Sider? Discretion is for much of the match, but playing a great role. So Well, he went around that uh, backhanded uh, Canada up the middle of the court and did expose his side of the court. And it was capitalized on by Miki and Sonata. Taking the ball early. You have to do if you can create an opening. Can't afford to take it on the second bounce because by the time you do that, the opponent will have got back into position. No tough to call though this match at the moment. I love the celebrations as well, Miki. Yeah. Yeah. Salute of a winner. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. And it, you know, I think it's instructive to... to uh, the pattern of the game is to hear the communication going on. There's plenty of talk on the Miki Sonata side of the court. Virtually nothing coming from Canada and Sider because 80% of the balls are going to Sider anyway. Mm. They know their positions. Yeah. They, know, they know what's coming. Could, yeah. could stop that forehand, though. A couple of really good forehands in that game from both Miki and Sonata. It has to be so accurate. It has to be that good. You know, it has to be within half a foot of the line if you are going to find a way past Sider and Kaneda. Because on that occasion, they break back. They set meandering one way, then the other.
emotional uh, nature this match. Where is he going to start creeping in? Miki this time, just over hitting on the baseline. But what an outrageous forehand he hit very early in that rally, going out wide. And uh, slicing it across for the drop shot, but uh, Sider was equal to it. It was great defense early on. Sider and Canada. And you say about the communication, they just seem to know their roles. Mm. They were being pushed and shoved all over the court early on in that rally, but every time they were able to neutralize the point. stretching for it in the end he was coming in at some pace as well so difficult to control when you're moving that quickly they're rolling in fast towards the net and it's a difficult uh, shot to make Nikki putting it in the net and uh, giving Canada inside a little bit of a a look in here. Had two service breaks in a row in the previous two games. So we're now here. It's the third double fault and hands three break points to uh, Sider was uh, <laughs> tiling down. <laughs> He's in no hurry. Two double faults in a row, and it's a break to Canada Insider. Much to the frustration of Takumi Miki and Takashi Sanada. It's 4-3 to Shingo Kaneda and Satoshi Saida with a break in the first set of an intense bronze medal match. Yet another twist in uh, this match. It's been uh, it's a roller coaster ride. These two uh, combinations chiseling away at one another to find a chink in the armor. And uh, at the moment, it's Canada and Saito who found uh, perhaps a little bit of a gap. They've got the break at 4 3. She decided to serve. New balls as well. Yeah, we've been looking for, for how and where this match might take a decisive turn, certainly in this first set. And uh, whilst the tactics and the battle plan of 
of the uh, Canada Cider combination is very clear. I just feel that maybe Miki and Sonata still trying to find mm. their way here. Well, no, also, you just wonder whether they, they can't get frustrated. You've mm. seen a couple of cheap points now given yeah. away. Absolutely. And it's getting that balance right between, you know, being aggressive, trying to create openings, but also being patient. Not getting frustrated if they don't find a way through. And that's uh, where, you, where you think about experience coming in. Cider and Canada. Medals in the past. A little bit more experience at this level in these types of big matches. I think that they're just maybe a little stronger at just resetting after what's gone before. And you, you just hope that Miki and Sonada, who played some really good tennis up until now, are able to do the same and not get too down with the, the, the trailing on the scoreboard. Got out after all that. Here it comes from Cider. Wow. It was just when we thought Miki and Sonata were throwing in a few cheap points, they were rock solid there, repeatedly going back to Cider, who did so well for so long in the rally. And that was brilliant, the fact that they were able to get this smash back. Great reactions from Miki. Phillies probably should have put that one away. They maybe could have used the angle more.
time the error comes from Miki. Oh, really is just uh, it's attritional, isn't it? Oh, it's like opening a, can, a tin can with a pocket knife. All openings. Well, they've just they've tightened it up, Miki and Sonata. They, they made a, a couple of errors at the back end of the previous game, a couple of errors at the start of this game, and they've done the right thing, as in just to be a little more patient. from Miki. Yeah. Well, they're not quite getting the balance right yeah. between attack and defence. They, they went from being super aggressive, made a few errors, and then they've gone very defensive. But you have to credit, you know, Sider and Kineda making so many balls. They look so solid. They look in complete control with what they're doing tactically out there. And this is where, again, Sonata and Miki uh, psychologically have to tell themselves, OK, our opponents are playing well. I mean, it's very important in tennis to be able to recognise when your opponents are playing well and not to get overly frustrated and say, OK, they're, they're playing well right now. You know, that maybe if they can keep that level up for the whole of the match, maybe they'll deserve the bronze medal. But, you know, they've got to keep asking questions, keep probing them, and maybe not change tactics so drastically. Oh. Pushed over the back from... Uh, Canada as Takuya uh, Miki serving to uh, stay in the set. Ian Sonata. Miki knows he made a, at least the Canada made a, a careless error there on the return. Brilliant. Stop volley, just a little heavy-handed, giving the invitation to Kaneda, the quality that he has, making it look easy. We've seen yeah. from Sada. So they've come on the backhand side. Just to get the racket head speed to generate the top spin. That backhand to keep it in. from Sonata and Sider not able to make the backhand volley. Oh. Decided to stay up and uh, off the frame.
pressure that uh, Canada can put on the serve. Really attacking it, forcing Sonata to, at least to Miki to go for the line. Covering the court so well, took the responsibility. Well, it's fascinating the positionings that they're getting in when they're at the back of the court. Sider's sitting so far back, but Canada's just around the baseline, inside the baseline. And what that means is that if this pair of Sonata and Miki do try the drop shot, he's able to get there quickly. And then what hand skills to finish it off. That was a wondrous little dink across the court. Good play in the former world number one. Been on the baseline, ran down that drop shot, and uh, finished the point off as well under a bit of pressure. Yeah. Well played. Sider has been rock solid everywhere on court. When he has come to the net, he's not put a foot wrong. That was a tough volley, awkward near his body. Did superbly well just to angle the racket inside the tram lines. We've got a set point. Made it inside up. Be a Mish and Mickey serve. He does love that. What a rally. Oh, that was a massive forehand. There's that celebration again. Snyder coming forward. Didn't do too much wrong, I thought. Spinning around quickly. And then whipping over the top of the ball. Superb shot. That's such a whip at pace and angle. Just perfect. Saves a break point, set point. Sonata inexplicably overhits 
It's forehand and gives Kaveda and Tyler another set point. Another from Sonata. Two unforced errors in the last two points from Sonata, and it gives Kaneda and side of the first set in this bronze medal match. And it's been hard earned. 66 minutes has taken them to prize this first set off. Takuya Miki and Takashi Sonata. 6 3. And Shingo Kaneda and Satoshi Saida. Step closer to the bronze medal. Long first set. Oh, he's gone the way of Canada and Sider. Now in six minutes, only nine games played, and they were rock solid from the back. Very few unforced errors. That's the key, really. Just the 12, 28 for Miki and Sonada. Not too many for them, but you can understand those unforced errors because these two have given them so few openings. First set, then two. Canada and Sider. Six games to throw. Bronze medal match in the men's doubles for wheelchair tennis. And it is Shigo Kaneda and Taitoshi Saido who have taken one set to love lead over Takuya Miki and Takashi Sanada. Shigo Kaneda to serve. Excellent play. It's probably Miki who's made more of the play. He's been a star player on that side of the net. It'll be interesting to see if they change their tactics. I think it's going to be more of the same, isn't it, from Sider and Kaneda. It's a question of whether Miki and Sonada can come up with something being ultra aggressive on the forehand there.
Yeah, the, that first point. They managed to get in. But there are not enough short balls coming from uh, Canada and Sider to afford them the opportunity to get in as regularly as they'd like and finish off the points. So, Miki and uh, Samani just feel they're sort of battling with exactly how they're going to uh, break down Canada and Sider. show really so many balls have come his way and it's been exceptional not only from the back of the court but whenever he has made the move to the front of the court he's done too much wrong and really showing his experience The other thing that Sider has done, incidentally, he's mostly kept the ball down the middle of the court. Very rarely has he looked to open up the court. He mishit a ball there, which gave Miki the angle. We've got a couple of break points early in this uh, second set, and what a way to save one of them. The first ace of the match. He hits the ball with so much topspin. Bit of side spin on the ball there as well Ended up bouncing and kicking and cutting away from his opponent Mickey salutes again. He worked the net well. Stretching both Sider and Canada. That's a really good start. Especially when you consider that they lost the last three games at the end of the first set. No hangover for Miki and Sonada. Made a nice positive brand of tennis there. It's just whether or not they can keep it going. As I say, it's all about balance for them of knowing when to step up the court and when to be aggressive, when to be patient. Yeah. Maybe ask questions, particularly if they do step up the court. They've just missed maybe a few too many volleys for me when they have come forward, and that's then stopped them from getting forward. Mm. So it's meant that they've stayed at the back, and then you feel if they stay at the back, they're playing into the hands of Canada and Sider. You, know, you have to say, it's been a quality performance so far from the sixth seeds. work to do for them in the second. Yeah, he has been uh, an absolute rock side up. He has been the player that Mickey uh, and Sonata want to avoid. And as a result, side has been uh, doing much of the work. That's so that when Canada has had to play shots, he's generally made them. Seen glimpses of his absolute world-class ability. Takashi Sanada to serve, second game, second set. Good start. Again, it has. 
has to be that good. To get Snyder on the stretch, that forehand right into the corner. Such little margin for error. That's why we saw 28 unforced errors from that pet, because it has to be that close to the lines. So he makes the forehand. Looking for a little dink go. Cross court drop by here, just trying to scoop it up almost. almost and drop it over the net. I always feel that this is where the match is going to be won and lost, really. And if uh, he can find his touch around the net, Miki, then he's got a good chance of coming through this one because they're going to get opportunities to get forward. Whether they or not they execute when they do. Canada at the net. We know he's got it. And a perfect example of his brilliance there. Well, this was a really tough backhand volley as well. It's the ability to move one way and hit the ball the other. Look at that. He's almost got his back to where the ball goes. Of course, uh, has to use just the one arm. Good arm strength and rock solid. Lovely angle. Sense what's happening to Miki and Sonata here. They, well, they're watching Sider just airball these back, just mm. pop them back, pop them back. And like, there's a frustration that's developing, you feel, in the Miki Sonata mm. combination. Two break points. That's exactly the point in terms of balance. Mm. Didn't get the balance right at all there. That wasn't the ball to try and take on the drive volley. Well, it's also trying to have the appreciation of what your opponents are doing. You know, side is doing a good job of it right now, and and rather than get frustrated with it, you need to say, okay, yeah, he's doing a good job. Right, let's see if we can just work the point a different way. But it it does almost seem like they're getting a little frustrated with the points lasting so long. So trying to create something out of nothing. Yeah. Yeah, we saw a few rallies in the first uh, set that went on for minutes, mm. and they were prepared to rally it out and. Uh, sit out the situation here in the last two points trying to finish them off early decided to serve one all
that's good. Well, that was the perfect point, I have to say, from these two. They were patient on that occasion and then pulled the trigger at the right moment. Some hand skills there, playing it at above head height. Look at where it landed, about a foot away from the net, stunning. a really tough mathematical equation or, or a Rubik's cube. It's just trying to find that yeah. formula that's going to work. You know what they're going to do, but, you know, it's just so tough to solve it. And, you know, we're sat here in the, in the commentary box and we haven't come up with a formula. No, I, I mean, I still don't know. It, it's the, as I say, all it is is about balance in terms of when to, to come forward and when to be aggressive. Getting that balance right. But you know, They've tried different things. They've tried drop shots. They've tried coming forward early on in the points. They tried to just hang with them. And, uh, really on the whole, it's been Canada and Sardar have come out of the majority of the rallies. And uh, just not able to curb the enthusiasm, the aggression there, overhitting on the second serve. Knew he had a shot at a second serve. It's also not having pace onto the racket, you know, isn't it? That they're having, sort of, there's, there's no, no pace on the ball from Sider. And that does lead to overforcing a lot of the time. Because you just feel like, oh, you know, I want to be hitting a bigger ball here. is outrageous absolutely phenomenal he wasn't the closest player on that side of the net to the ball so quick across the court just feel that that just needed a little bit more backspin on the ball and it would have been enough you can't even give Canada half a chance because he'll take it fabulous little dink cross court Sider and uh, Kingo Kaneda, a 2-1 lead with serve in the second set. They've taken the first 6-3 in this bronze medal men's doubles match. Uh, 
Kien, that Takashi Sanado feel they have it all to do here. They're set down Thank with you. serve in the second set. It's Miki to serve. Just a few indications of the last few games that uh, they might be getting their strategy a little wrong. Let's see how they go here. Miki to serve. a hard shot to play especially at that speed yeah, really rolling in quickly and then to also get the, the drive volley not just the, the conventional volley very tough to time Point up to there. Suddenly the court has opened up for the angles and uh, both combinations switching and swinging one way and the other. With that, with that shot, in particular, and on the angle, taking it early. The other thing you have to remember here is that you know, these players know each other's games so well. So you, you do wonder with Sider, in particular, who's played with both of these players this year, they're slow balling it. And you may well know that that's what they don't like. And those types of balls and tactically, and the experience of Canada and Sider seems to be standing them in better stead. Game so well. back and look at just a few too many from that part of the court that have uh, gone into the net yeah and also not really aware what he was trying to do with the volley there you know, in the middle of the court not too much of an angle to work with he wasn't that close to the net no. either so a lot of their volleys have been around the service line so they, are to come forward. they have to try and ensure that that next ball is is out in front of them but of course it's so tough to do because side is hitting those low high balls so often. There we go, a missed return. Shortest point of the match almost. Absolutely, very rare. A point for Mickey and Sonata to level it at two. Shot it over the back from Sonata. You 
interference from his, his record mm. of late. Yeah, he's not found his A game today. Mm. He knows. Oh. It's good though from Miki, of course. You know if your, your partner's struggling, you've got to try and keep their spirits high. They had as well. It will be frustrating. Getting a 27 year old. of Pineda there in the pitching that uh, high ball but in the end it's the unforced error of the back from the side of <laughs> like that tactic though just catching Pineda by surprise taking the forehand early because they've been targeting Sider time and time again and springing the surprise on Pineda he's able to deal with it Down the court, oh. right into the corner. He loved it, and it yeah, really is. He's played some fantastic shots. We did say he missed a few, he's missed a few volleys, but uh, these sort of shots certainly make up for it. Brilliant. Yeah, no pace on the ball whatsoever. To find a way past Sider, though, it's got to be that good. Around, you're seeing the elbow come up there, so you get, you get the, the top spin over the ball. To all. Second set, and they're fighting for survival here. Takuya Miki and Takashi Tsunada. Canada to serve. confidence at the moment his head's beginning to drop his in terms of his body language it's not good at the moment I whether you'll see Canada inside and begin to target him yeah, it's about to, yeah that's uh, would be a thought for them Long. Mickey swivels and looks at the chair in uh, disbelief. It's a powerful forehand that he has. That's uh, what we've said time and time again in commentary. It's got to be that close to the lines mm. if they are to find a way or even get Sider or Canada on the stretch. Oh. Oh. And a rare 
back of the court from this man. Doesn't say much, neither. And then on that side of court, too, plenty of uh, communication on the other side. That's good. A wonderful combination. Well, he's sometimes let him down today, but it was the forehand that set the point up. Allowed him to get forward and lovely, delicate hand skills. Oh, absolutely. Just let the ball hit the racket, cushioned it. Crafty. By that mm, frustrating forehand is uh, his biggest weapon he has sometimes missed today it's not necessarily a big serve though so he's he uh, annoyed with that missed return Down the middle again with that uh, big forehand, Mickey. Two. They were doing a good job there of just getting Sider and Canada to cross a little more. A little bit more communication had to happen on the other side of the net. So just simply hitting to Sider. They were coming from Canada, so they'll have a little more success from varying where they're, they're hitting the balls. Brilliant, to really attack that serve. And so the forehand's been a bit hit and miss today, but this one was right on the money. Rolled into it, whipped across the ball, and across the line of the ball too, but able to generate enough power to comfortably take it away from Kineda. trying to impose themselves on Canada and uh, Sider now in the second set and Takuya Miki is the man who's lighting the fire for this pair they've taken the initiative here in the second set beautifully played deep forehand and even a round of applause from 
Kubota there. First shot was uh, scrambled back, and the second just too good. Miki and uh, Takashi Sonata now a break up in the second set. They need to win it to stay in this bronze medal match. Buzz around the center court here because this match uh, is developing very, very intriguingly with uh, Takuya Miki and Takashi Sonata now. Break up on serving. Sonata is. with that forehand is Miki. I understand why. There's a fire in the last game. Let's take it as early as possible. Get as much power behind it. Just missed it. Uh, Whisker. There's a little look at the line and a little look at the line judge, then the umpire. Well, just a fascinating contrast in, in approaches, not just to this sport, but to any sport there, because this man, Sider. better job of opening up the court and finishing the points off. That one could have got awkward around hip height that he had to take it. Wonderfully controlled though. Yeah, the hitting zone uh, for a good shot at that in that space of the court is very narrow from the chair. Pushed it out. Not so much emotion, does he? No. It's a frustration for him. We've seen very few errors from him from the back of the court, even less at the front. 
has been drawn forward. He's been exceptional. Didn't miss by much, though. What I was trying to make quickly is that he puts in a far less, uh, appear, appears to put in far less effort in terms of moving mm. around. He just gets it back. The others are working. Yes. Just cover twice the distance. Yet there's so little to choose between these two combinations. Double fault. Sonata. We feel if there is a chink in the armor in this combination, it is in this man, Takashi Sonata. But yeah, I get the point you're, you're saying. You just, it's the economical movement mm. of uh, Sider and Kuneda. They seem to just put a lot less effort in. Also, Sider's a bit older than everyone else at 44. Uh, I reckon Sider thinks that was out, but uh, no, this is uh, Deuce, Ace. Is the difference and Miki is keeping them uh, moving forward here with this forehand of his yeah like it again surprise tactic they're expecting the ball to go back to side it that's why uh, you know Canada is just moving towards the middle catching them by surprise and he's got enough power in the forehand to do that he's inside in So good at neutralizing the point. Seda and Kaneda, they were being pushed and shoved all over the court there. Dude. Time and time again, they got it back to the middle and they got themselves back in position. This was a chance though, as I say, this is, I feel, whether the match is going to be won or lost. It's going to be on Miki's racket at the front of the court. It's about 50-50, I would say, in that position. And a rare cheap point. I feel Miki at the moment is playing some exceptional tennis. I'm up against it a little now, Sider. Made it. Like a miss hit there from the uh, side of it again. It's this man who's taking control of the net all more frequently now. I love his reaction after every winner as well. You know, he really enjoys it. And it's great to see. Celebrates it like he scored the goal in the final of the football. And he has certainly pulled his team up into a, a fantastic position now in this second set. He's been the one who's been able to hit the majority of the winners. Sonata's becoming a little more consistent as well. We saw him make a few errors earlier on in this set, but he's providing the platform for Miki to be aggressive. So now it's the only switch onto Sider and Kaneda. Do they need to change their tactics?
mistimed it a fraction there, and it was actually an adjustment and an, a bit of an improvisation from Sonada. He initially wanted to play the drop shot. Canada in the serve. He did the hard bit as well there, Sonata. It was a great return. You can see he is lacking in belief. He's moving up the court. forward with conviction. We wondered whether the tactics would change on their side and maybe we'll see a bit more of this. Yeah, they're so talented. They timed his role to perfection, just slowly moving in on the ball and rock solid with the volley. from the side up. As I said, it's, it's so rare to see these players out of position, which shows just how good they are. You forget because they're just playing so many balls. Just a couple of times now we've seen them yeah. not quite be in the right position. It just shows how often they are. Good tennis it is. going over Mickey who is putting everything into this effort. It's 4-3 with Miki and Sonata with a break in the second set. Fighting to stay alive on the bronze medal match having lost the first set 6-3. Fascinating phase of this bronze medal match. So with the new balls is Takuya Miki and Takashi Sanada. Up their noses in front of the set at 4 3. Need to consolidate that, yep. Yeah. Again from Miki. He is the aggressor here. He's the man who's making the play for 
this combination taking this early and nailing the forehand not for the first time wide to the forehand corner of Canada with good effect Out the uh, line call was good, but this man Sonata is struggling with his forehand, really is a problem. And Canada and Sider are going to continue to play on him and give themselves a chance at it. Pressure mounts on Miki to take control of the point. Exerting himself on the serve of Miki there. He played that return a meter from the service line. Which, uh, drew the error from Miki as he tried to fire a deep return to the baseline, but overhit it. Great tussle going on at the moment. What ascendancy here. That's an illustration of the frustration that is clearly boiling up in this man, Sonata. His body language isn't good, and it gives Canada and Sider two break back points to level it for. This is a critical phase here. Again, the Canada attack uh, on the serve, and Mickey buries his head in disappointment. It's back on serve at four all. The experience, the skill of uh, Satoshi Saida and Shingo Kaneda pulled them in back into uh, the set. They were a breakdown. Canada to serve for all. going his way at the moment.
made the error again there, Sonata. And it's so tough when you aren't playing well in doubles. It's harder than it is in singles, because at least in singles you can just go, well, I'm playing poorly. But in doubles, of course, you're letting your partner down too, and that burden can weigh pretty heavy as well. Particularly with the way that Miki's been playing of late. He's been playing some excellent tennis, and Sonata will be getting more and more down on himself because he'll not want to let Miki down here. And they finally got that. Super tennis. Great aggression. You have to say quality defense too from Sider and Kaneda. Just hanging on in the rally for as long as possible. But it was relentless from Miki and Sonata. It's that man Miki again finds the winner. It's just wonderful to watch. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be determined on the smallest of margins here. You feel Sonata's not playing so well at the moment. He'll perhaps come back given time. Played a better point there, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Going back again to that Tanada point, isn't it? You play your best tennis particularly in doubles when you're relaxed and enjoying it. You can see Miki's enjoyed stuff out there today, but it's his role now almost is to try and get Sonata to enjoy it. And, uh, you can see at the moment Sonata, every time you look at it, his face, he, he, there's tension on there. He's feeling a bit of the pressure. He'll try and enjoy this moment. That, you know, it's the first time he's been in a, a bronze medal match, the first time he's got a, to a chance to win a, a medal. The experience of Canada and Sider at the moment is serving them a little better. Step up to the second set. Again, nicely early take in return. That forehand is firing for Miki. Sider and Canada uh, have close on a thousand doubles matches between them. Miki and uh, Sonata, not quite as many. Trying to take the initiative in the last point there with that drive yeah, forehand. And a little too long. And that error gives Shingo Kaneda and Satoshi Saida a 5-4 lead. They lead by a set. They're one game away from the bronze medal in the men's doubles.
Here we are, the critical phase of this bronze medal match. Side has been rock solid. Canada likewise. And it is Sonata to serve to stay in the match. Shame. I mean, he worked the point so well to set up the opportunity. And his volleys just have let him down a little bit today. He's missed a few too many and he's running out of time. To, uh, he's got to cut the errors out at the net anyway. To remain in this bronze medal match. Oh, wow. I uh, suppose it's all within the rules regulations, so do anything to get the point at the moment. Serves an interesting one because you know, again, see Miki missing another volley. But it's an interesting one. In able body tennis, you're supposed to, well, they say it's good sportsmanship to tell your opponent before you, you hit it. But I've never agreed with that. I don't see why it should be seen as not sporting. It's still part of the game, you know. It's whatever way you can find a way to win. And Side has done that. You know, he sat at the back of the court, he's hitting loopy ball after loopy ball. You may not say it's, it's the best to watch sometimes, but it's effective. Yep. And if the underarm serves effective, why not go to it? Three errors from Miki, ironically, in this uh, game. And all from a similar phase of the court. And it has resulted in Canada and Sider getting two bronze medal points here. Tempting Sonata to have a go at the volley. Still a bronze medal point to this uh, man, Sider, and his partner, Kuneda. Good enough, he finally makes the backhand. 
at full stretch. Well, he's missed a, a few balls at the front of the court in this game in particular. He's getting ready to say, had they lost that point, that's where they've been let down, really. When they've come forward, they haven't been able to find the right shot at the right time. But boy, didn't he find one there, Miki. Gutsy tennis to go for such an audacious shot as well at match point down. Decided to switch mid-rally. Trying to open up the forehand of Miki. Wanted to be bold and positive and really take on side effort. Again, making the error at the front of the court. So third bronze medal point for Canada and Sider. It's over the back from Miki. And it is Shingo Kineda and his partner Satoshi Saida who claim another medal in the men's doubles at wheelchair tennis at the Paralympic Games. And deep disappointment for Takuya Miki and Takashi Sinada. What a battle it was. Attritional, tactical, a contrast in styles and personalities and character. They know each other well, they play with one another very often. But it is the experience of this pair, Canada and Saida. Canada a fifth medal, Saida a third medal at Paralympic Games level. A wonderful, wonderful match. Well, he's won three golds and one bronze before this, Canada, but you could see from the emotion on his face just what this bronze medal means. He's had a really difficult injury plague 2016. And able to come away from the Rio Paralympics with a bronze, as is Sider, who was rock solid throughout that match, had to hit so many balls. And at the end of the day, they executed their plan to near perfection. It was a super performance from these two experienced pros. Well, then see too much, uh, too much by way of uh, emotion or expression from a side of it now smile from him. And how well did these two play, particularly Miki. Yeah, they offered a lot, certainly. But it finishes the bronze medal going